One of the most commonly asked questions in Destiny history is what's the best shotgun right now? And while it was clear in the past, the fact is it isn't anymore. You can go watch 10 top tier players right now and I guarantee they'll be using different shotguns for different reasons. But honestly, these choices are often gut feelings because no one actually knows for sure if things like Icarus Grip or Quick Access Sling are best, whether range is useless after a certain point, or whether aggressives or lightweights are king. Well, my friend Ivan and I teamed up to finally answer every question about how shotguns work. We did a ton of research and testing over the past four months and lost our minds along the way, but we've actually found some really interesting information that I guarantee you didn't know yet. And at the end, we've got a tier list for you based on over 1,000 shotgun tests we did. This is our attempt to make the ultimate shotgun video. And yes, I understand by saying this, I have just cursed myself to make another shotgun video in the future. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Before we can explain how each aspect of a shotgun works, it's important for you to understand how the testing works, because when dealing with something as nauseating as pellet spread RNG, you have to build a level of confidence in your conclusions. We followed some standard procedures, such as using the exact 7 meter mark on the Darcy sniper. We had the person getting shot emote to reset the character's position every time to align hitboxes. We aimed at the exact same point every single time, which was right around their waistline. We always tested at the same resilience for every test, and we always ensured the no damage changing or accuracy or aim assist changing mods or perks active at any point. However, the most important thing we did for testing is using a binomial probability distribution with the Clopper Pearson exact method. That's right, we were both popular and cool in high school. Anyway, what the heck is a binomial probability distribution? Well, let's say you did 10 shotgun tests trying to one-hit kill an opponent with time loss found verdict at 7 meters. Maybe you got 6 kills with it. Well, if you did 10 more tests, how confident are you that the results would be the same? This is why people say the larger the sample size, the better, because it helps iron out streaks of good or bad luck. But the problem is, people don't have time to do 10,000 tests on every little thing. That's where statistical geniuses come into play with models they've created to solve this very problem. One of those models is the Clopper Pearson exact method. Let's go back to that found verdict example. The first test was 6 out of 10, right? Well, if I did 10 more tests, I'd be pretty darn confident that it would get between 3 and and nine one-hit kills. As you can see, 10 tests isn't very helpful because telling somebody they'll get a kill between three and nine times isn't conclusive at all. So we had to do more tests to narrow that interval. The sweet spot for our data was between 100 to 200 tests for every shotgun roll at every range. But anyway, that's how these models work. They look at your data and tell you, okay, with X percent confidence, the next time you do your test, the result will be within this range. Here's a real life example with one of our tests. We did 200 tests with a 59 range time loss found verdict at 7 meters. It killed 110 times. First instinct might be, okay cool, so there's a 55% chance you'll get your one hit kill at 7 meters. But the model says, no no no, you should say that you're 95% confident that when you shoot someone at 7 meters with that shotgun, it'll kill them between 48% and 62% of the time. You might be thinking, okay, what's the point? Well, honestly, it's just best practices in statistics, because if we're not going to do 10,000 tests, then we just need to talk in those ranges of probability to be truthful and accurate. So long story short, when we give you these ranges of probability and our conclusions, you can trust us because we aren't just some YouTubers who did 20 tests, got a result that worked with a clickbait thumbnail, and called it a day. We actually put the time in here and used our good old friend, math. And in addition to math, this video sums up years of TWAB articles, research from other community members or content creators, and quotes from Bungie developers on podcasts or in Discord messages where they've clarified statements they made on podcasts. The level of information we sifted through is grotesque, and the only reason we were able to do this is because Ivan and I have both been steeped in Destiny PvP science for years and naturally enjoy keeping up on the news as it comes through or testing things for ourselves. We honestly just want to inform people here, and we appreciate your time. This is great. Anyone want a hug? Hugs? No? No hugs. All right, on to shotgun classifications. Rapid fire frame shotguns do 16.67 damage per pellet within their optimal range where they require 12 pellets to kill. They are the signature two tap shotgun because they fire so quickly at 140 rounds per minute. They are great fun and we highly recommend trying them in 6v6 game modes. 
Rapid fires typically have high base aim assist, which is important for shotguns, especially on controller, and they intrinsically have a spread that's slightly wider than lightweight frames, which on paper would make them okay for cleanups, but in practice their low damage per pellet makes this a little more difficult than it needs to be. Lightweight frame shotguns do 18.33 damage per pellet within their optimal range, where they require 11 pellets to kill. Lightweights typically have middle of the road base aim assist, they are excellent cleanup shotguns because they have the tightest intrinsic spread, and also lightweight do more damage than rapid fires and only slightly less than precisions. Enticingly, lightweight frames also inherently provide an invisible plus 20 mobility for a faster strafe speed and faster hunter dodge cooldown, and they provide a 6% faster sprint speed, but you only get those benefits when you're holding the lightweight shotgun. Precision frame shotguns do 19.08 damage per pellet within their optimal range where they require 10 pellets to kill. However, against 60 resilience or higher, they require 11 pellets. They are great cleanup tools and have good one-hit kill chances too thanks to their medium-tight pellet spread and higher damage per pellet compared to lightweights and rapids. They typically have very high base aim assist, which is excellent. Aggressive frame shotguns do 22.25 damage per pellet within their optimal range where they require 9 pellets to kill. Aggressives typically have the lowest base aim assist and lowest base handling and range, which makes sense since they have the deepest one-hit kill range out of any shotgun archetype. We know all these exact damage numbers per pellet thanks to weapons feature lead Chris Proctor at Bungie when he was interviewed on the Firing Range podcast and he gave us the number for aggressives, but in particular thanks to user Mossy for this extremely useful spreadsheet that shows the exact damages per pellet which he created using some space magic in the Enclave. Okay, on to handling. Handling is almost always your time to kill or TTK in Destiny, because so many fights are defined by how fast someone can switch to their other weapon to clean up a kill, and that speed is dependent on the handling stat. This means handling is your TTK, and this is especially true for shotguns, since the smartest players in the game always weaken their opponents with primary or ability damage first, and then push in to get cleanup kills with their shotguns afterwards. Because handling completely makes or breaks a shotgun, it's important to know how handling works from shotgun to shotgun. Interestingly, lightweight frames have the most intrinsic handling, then precisions, then rapid fires, then aggressives have the lowest. Handling affects draw, aim down sights, and stow speed. On screen, you're seeing an animation I did for my friend Castle, who is a fellow Destiny creator who enjoys providing data-driven advice in concise, entertaining videos. Draw speed, ADS speed, and stow speed are three different actions that can all change based on various things. For example, the perk quick draw only affects the draw animation, making it equivalent to 100 handling, but it goes away as soon as you begin to ADS, or one second after you draw your shotgun. Quick draw will, however, work on your stow speed if you shoot in hip fire and stow right after within that single second. So that is a nice benefit for quick draw. And by the way, if any of this information changes in the future, we'll let you know in the pinned comment or in additional videos that are added to the playlist that this video is in. Now, as for a perk like Snapshot, it provides extra handling and an animation multiplier to your ADS speed, so it really speeds up the ADS, but it does not affect draw or stow speed. If you get quick draw and snapshot on a shotgun, this is great because it means your draw and ADS speed will be blazingly fast, but your stow speed will be whatever your shotgun's base handling speed is, which may be quite slow. Also, side note, a slow draw speed increases the time it takes you to fire from sprint or jump, where your shotgun is like at your hip when you're running around and you kind of have to bring it up to your chest to actually fire it. So a faster draw speed from sprint or jump will make that ready time faster. So if you want all of these actions to be fast at all times regardless of perks or mods, then you must have a high handling stat on your shotgun. But furthermore, you need high handling on your primary weapon for a fast swap speed between your primary and special because you have to finish each draw and stow animation before you can begin the next one. For instance, if you're swapping from a 30 handling hand cannon to a 100 handling shotgun, it'll actually feel kind of slow because stowing your hand cannon will take quite a bit of time and you have to finish doing that before you can draw your shotgun. So in that case, with a 100 handling shotgun and a 30 handling hand cannon, to speed up your overall swap speed, you would be best served by using a hand cannon dexterity mod rather than a shotgun dexterity mod. If you'd like to see exactly how many frames your swap speed animation will take, you can use this calculator made by shrimp276 to enter all relevant information to your situation and see the exact frame count at the bottom. You can find this calculator linked in the video description. Download a copy to your personal Google Drive and you can edit it from there with the information pertinent to your loadout. 
Now, it feels great to use weapons with high base handling, but there are a few ways to boost your handling even further and still have a really reliably snappy shotgun, and that's animation speed boosts. Perks like Threat Detector or things like Dexterity Mods are called animation speed boosters. This is because they don't just add a flat boost to your handling stat number, they take into account whatever your base handling speed is and then increase it by a percent. So if you were to reach 100 handling on your shotgun and have Threat Detector, for instance, it would make your shotgun even faster because it's just boosting whatever that handling baseline is by a percentage, and if you're at 100, it'll get even faster. Here are the numbers. Threat detector at one stack, meaning one enemy is within 15 meters, boost your handling animation speed by 25%. Dexterity mods boost your handling animation speed by 20%. Quick access sling, a weapon mod, boosts your handling animation speed by 10%. So how do you build a snappy shotgun? Well, basically the strategy is to reach a decent intrinsic handling speed on your shotgun and then add the mod quick charge. Quick charge is incredible because it provides about 20 to 25 more handling points to your shotgun if you socket one other arc charged with light mod somewhere in your build, which is a very natural thing for people to do since most PvP players use Radiant Light and Powerful Friends for plus 20 strength and plus 20 mobility. Whatever that handling goal is for you will depend on your playstyle, but we personally aim for around 50 handling so that after quick charge is on, your shotgun has around 70 to 75 handling, which feels quite nice. Then on top of that, if you can get Threat Detector or a Dexterity mod to boost the speed even further, all the better. <laughs> Maybe I had a stew going. Okay, now we're about to start taking our deep, deep dive down the rabbit hole of spread shotgun mechanics. So, when you fire any spread shotgun, there are 12 pellets that emerge from the barrel of the shotgun and spread out in a random pattern. This pattern is dictated by a few rings and quadrants within these rings centered around one point in the middle, which is called the center pellet. This point in the middle, the center pellet, is always just one pellet around which all the other pellets will fall. So if your center pellet lands a little bit up to your right, then all the other pellets will revolve around it and land up there too. Hey, before we go any further, I think it's important for you to know that when I say aim assist cone and accuracy cone, there's more going on under the hood than you may think. Here's a fast, simplified summary to help explain this mechanic that I think many people actually don't fully understand. Wherever you're aiming your reticle, think of it as a small dot, that's where your accuracy cone is pointed. Your accuracy cone is a window saying this is where your shot can fall. The aim assist cone is actually an invisible cone emerging from your head that is constantly pointed at all of your opponents. Like there's just multiple aim assist cones pointing from your head to all your opponents. Whereas your accuracy cone is just one cone that's moving all over the place wherever you point your reticle. If you fire a shot and your reticle is outside of the aim assist cone on your target, then your shot will go somewhere within your accuracy cone and it has a high likelihood of missing. With shotguns, this affects your center pellet, so if your accuracy cone is randomly off target because your reticle wasn't within your opponent's aim assist window, then the center pellet is going somewhere off target and all the other pellets will follow it. You'll probably still hit some of your pellets, but a fair amount of them will likely miss because your center pellet was not moved under your target's center mass. Now with shotguns, if you fire and your reticle is inside of that aim assist cone, then your accuracy cone will be moved onto the opponent's center mass. Then all the other pellets will fall around it and you'll hit almost all your pellets. If you add more aim assist to your gun through targeting mods, what you're actually doing is making that invisible aim assist cone that's always pointed from your head to your opponent larger. So it'll be more likely your reticle will fall within the aim assist cone and move your accuracy cone onto the target center mass. So by adding more aim assist, you're effectively just making the situation more forgiving, more likely to have your center pellet aim assisted onto your target's center mass. I guess you could think of it as you're enlarging the hitbox. Those are the essential cone mechanics affecting shotguns. Alrighty, deep breath, let's jump back into pellet mechanics now and how changing all of these various levers changes your shotgun's consistency. Now, we know aim assist is impactful in guiding your center pellet onto your target's center mass, so higher aim assist really can help make up for your reticle's center being ever so slightly off your target, which is very likely to happen when you're aiming or hip firing spread shotguns quickly against moving targets. We also recently learned that the aim assist cone angle on spread shotguns is 5.25 degrees if you have zero aim assist and 5.75 degrees if you have 100 aim assist. This number determines how big that aim assist cone is that's pointed at your opponent. 
Since many shotguns start with middle of the road aim assist already, let's just say you're starting with like 50 aim assist. Well, this means for the distance from 50 to 100 aim assist, you're only gaining 0.25 degrees to your aim assist cone angle. That's a kind of small difference in how wide your aim assist cone is. And not to mention, you can't just magically get 50 more aim assist points on a shotgun. You can really only get increases of like five or 10 aim assist points with targeting mods. If you think back to the earlier section where we explained how higher aim assist makes it more likely that you can get your accuracy cone onto your target, then having a wider aim assist cone would be better for getting your spreads center pellet to aim assist onto your target's center mass. Unfortunately, in this situation, the difference in having high aim assist versus low aim assist is so small that it's not really worth it to go for high aim assist on spread shotguns. We learn this from a Massive Breakdowns podcast interview with weapons feature lead at Bungie, Chris Proctor. Now, the exception here is controllers. Aim assist on spread shotguns when it comes to controllers really does help because we learned from Chris that it noticeably improves reticle friction, meaning as you are tracking a moving target with your controller, higher aim assist really will make you feel a difference in how much your shotgun's reticle stays on target. It's just gonna feel stickier and that's great. Anyway, once accuracy and aim assist dictate where your center pellet will land, the rest of your pellets revolve around it in rings. I actually like to call them donuts and each donut has segments in it. There is the accuracy cone of where your center pellet can fall, which is in the middle of this graph, and then around that center pellet is your first donut, where four pellets can land, and then there's a larger donut around that one, where seven pellets can land. One plus four plus seven equals 12, so this makes up the 12 pellet burst, which is inherent to every spread shotgun. As we said before, this spread will intrinsically be wider or narrower depending on your shotgun's archetype. All right, so within these two donuts, you have specific segments where pellets can land. These segments control for randomness a little bit, so you don't randomly have all four pellets of the inner donut all landing in one corner, which would be kind of busted and cause you to randomly map someone. Pellets can overlap with other pellets if they are at the same level of donut. They can invade each other's segments to their left and right ever so slightly, but they can never bleed over into a segment at a different donut level. This mechanic is fascinatingly cool, so a big round of applause to the people at Bungie who designed this. It makes it so that shotgun blasts are somewhat random without feeling completely unreliable. For this chapter, we want to thank user the Jade Rabbit Emperor on Reddit for their research about this fascinating mechanic. In the future, it'll be interesting to learn if or how these mechanics under the hood may shift based on archetypes or perks, but for now, this seems to be how the shotgun spread mechanics fundamentally work. Um. Would you like to try that a little simpler, maybe? No. All right, stability. This section is short and easy. As you fire any gun rapidly, your accuracy cone widens and your aim assist cone narrows, becoming less forgiving. So it'll be much harder to land shots over time. Higher stability causes your aim assist cone to not shrink as quickly, and if it's bigger, it can help catch your reticle and place your accuracy cone onto your target's center mass. We know that stability does provide a linear benefit to combating your aim assist cone's degradation. We're confident that this is how this mechanic works, but we believe stability is not that important to every shotgun archetype. Almost certainly not for aggressives and precision frames due to the low RPM, but we believe lightweight frames and rapid fire frames do have noticeable benefits if you have higher stability, particularly with something like Reese Walker, which has very low stability and can attain a very fast RPM. So with lightweights and rapid fires, there will be a loss to aim assist and thus consistency if you're firing very quickly. On to range. If you thought center pellet mechanics were a mind f get ready for range, because this stat is remarkably weird on shotguns. It may seem straightforward, but it's just not. So, of course, range naturally pushes out the point at which your shotgun pellets experience damage drop-off. Thanks to our friend Castle, we can see these damage drop-off curves and where exactly a max range roll on each shotgun archetype will start experiencing damage falloff. You can see that aggressive frames begin experiencing damage falloff much earlier than precisions and lightweights, meaning assuming you're comparing max range shotgun rolls to each other, once you're in excess of about 8 meters, precision frames and lightweight frames are actually better than aggressives because they're doing the same amount of damage per pellet, but they intrinsically have a tighter spread and more handling. 
Now, when it comes to range, in our testing, we started to notice some really interesting things about points of diminishing returns and how they interact with your shotgun's intrinsic spread. And I would say this section is the meat of the video, probably the most important part for people to understand. So here goes. This has been really tough to comprehend and write, and I'm sure it'll be difficult to explain, but this is our best attempt. On all spread shotguns, your one-hit kill range is bottlenecked by the intrinsic spread of your shotgun's archetype. Because each archetype requires a different number of pellets to kill, aggressives are 9, precisions are 10 to 11, and lightweights are 11, this means if your spread is so wide that you will miss a pellet, you might be one short of what you need for a one-hit kill. So regardless of damage drop-off, there's clearly a point at which your spread RNG is your limit for a one-hit kill. For example, in the case of precision frame shotguns, you need 10 pellets to get a reliable one-hit kill on a 5 resilience opponent. Let's pretend that at 6.5 meters away from them, the spread is just so far gone that you'll never hit 10 of the 12 pellets. Well, adding more to your range stat isn't going to do anything now. If you're only hitting 8 pellets of the 12, I don't care what your damage drop-off point is. For precisions, you basically need to get around 6.5 meters before you start experiencing damage falloff, and then you'll be good. Now, in the case of aggressive frames, we have some even more specific data for you. For aggressives, you need 9 pellets to kill if you're within 6.5 to 7 meters, which is their optimal range. If you can't get your range stat high enough that you're experiencing damage falloff at around 6.5 meters, then you're going to be in trouble. But lucky for you, we figured out that range stat for you. For aggressives, you need at least 60 range to avoid hitting damage falloff before 6.5 meters. And more realistically slash enticingly, we'd recommend 70 range so you avoid hitting damage falloff until about 6.8 meters, which would also afford you more flexibility to kill high resilience guardians or get better cleanup kills. Now, what's more, because your spread is so wide on aggressives, even with full choke, your chances of hitting that 10th pellet required for a kill and making up for all the lost damage due to damage drop off, well, those chances are so low that you'll just never hit that 10th pellet. Even if you have a maximum range aggressive shotty, it doesn't matter because if you have to hit a 10th pellet, which is extremely unlikely on aggressive frame shotguns at 7 meters or more, then it doesn't matter if you have high range because you're never going to hit 10 pellets anyway. Here's an example from our mutual friend Castle who had a great way of explaining it that we really liked. Imagine you're standing really close to your opponent with a found verdict. When you hit them, you'll see 22 to 23 damage points per pellet. When you back up a bit, you'll probably still see 22 to 23 per pellet because your damage drop-off point doesn't start for some time, and it isn't gradual. You'll be hitting max damage on your pellets for a while, all the way up to about 7 meters. But eventually, you'll hit this magic point where suddenly your pellets start doing 21 to 22 per pellet or even 19 to 20 per pellet instead of 22 to 23. When you start hitting these lower damage numbers per pellet, suddenly if you do the math, you're going to start having problems. 9 pellets times 20 damage isn't enough for a kill, meaning you'll need that 10th pellet, which you just can't hit. Say the average guardian has 60 resilience or about 192 health points. On an aggressive frame shotgun, each pellet will be 22.25 damage within its drop-off range. Remember, we said you only need 9 pellets to hit to get a 1-hit kill. Dividing 192 health by 9 pellets, you get 21.33. So as you can see, there's a point at which you are actually experiencing damage drop-off, but you can still get a 1-hit kill with the beautiful 9 pellets because you don't need 22 to 23 damage per pellet. You can deal 21 to 22 and be okay. But once you go beyond that and start hitting 21s only, well, 21 times 9 is not 192. And then you're in big trouble because you need a 10th pellet to kill. And if you need that 10th pellet because your intrinsic spread is so wide, even with full choke, you're screwed. And you're just simply not going to get the one hit kill. So the moral of the story here is that if you need another pellet to kill, you've already lost, and range isn't going to help you. And therefore, this is why we strongly believe that one-hit kill range is actually tied to the intrinsic spread of a shotgun's archetype and not to its range stat after a certain point. And this point changes for each archetype of shotgun. Okay, now we need to talk about full choke. Does it still matter or not? Well, at 7 meters, full choke does not help one-hit kill chances. No. You would think that a tighter pellet spread would help you hit that extra pellet you need to increase your chances, but it's simply not tightened enough by full choke to help you land that extra pellet. It just isn't enough. Only range helps improve one-hit kill chances, and at some point, like we've said, range doesn't even matter anymore. Here are the numbers we found after hundreds of tests, and for all these stats, we have a 95% confidence interval. 
For a precision frame with full choke, at 7 meters, your one-hit kill chances lie somewhere between 30% and 46.3%. For a precision frame without full choke, at 7 meters, your one-hit kill chances are between 28.9% and 44.9%. So, we can confidently say, full choke is not helping out here. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt with another math lesson, but I think in this situation it would be really helpful to have a little bit more explanation of why we're saying full choke doesn't matter for precisions at 7 meters. If you look at those two intervals, 30% to 46% and 28% to 44%, think of them visually, like those overlap. The interval of 30 to 46 overlaps with 28 to 44. I think seeing a visual example here could really help. If you take two groups of people here, one group in blue and one group in green, you can see that at a baseline, their anxiety level is about the same. It's between a 6 and a 7. Statistically, because these intervals overlap so much, it's likely that they both had the same level of anxiety to start out because the intervals overlap quite a bit there. Now, if you give one of these groups a dog, their anxiety level decreases. So you can see, after 30 minutes, those who got a dog, well, their anxiety level went down. Those who didn't get a dog, their anxiety level stayed about the same. Those intervals at the end there barely overlap, which means it's highly likely that the probability is just different. If you have a dog, after 30 minutes you'll probably be less anxious, and if you don't have a dog, after 30 minutes you'll probably be the same amount of anxious. So that's how these intervals work, and hopefully that visual is a little bit helpful. Okay, sorry, back to shotguns though. When we say full choke doesn't matter here, it's because those probabilities, those p-values, overlap so much for those with full choke and without full choke, which means when you add in full choke, it doesn't change the 7 meter 1 hit kill chances. And we can say that because those intervals overlap so much. Going forward into the other graphs, if you see those intervals overlap numerically, hopefully you can use this example to visualize that that means they're probably the same, and if they don't overlap, that means they're probably different. Take it, friends! Arm yourselves with knowledge! Alright, we'll let the other guy take it from here. Okay, now onto aggressives. For aggressives with full choke, your one hit kill chances are between 42% and 62% at 7 meters. And then for an aggressive without full choke, at 7 meters, your one hit kill chances are between 42.6% and 63.7%. Once again, full choke is just not helping one hit kill chances here. So yeah, these are some pretty big revelations. Full choke is not necessary for improving your one hit kill chances. So you might be thinking, wouldn't full choke theoretically help clean up kills though because you might be allowed to hit one more pellet on a weak opponent who's like really far away from you? Well unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case either. We did a test where we fired a 140 hand cannon shot at an opponent at 9 meters and then immediately followed up with a shotgun shot and for aggressives and lightweights across 400 kills, those with full choke and those without full choke had no difference in their cleanup potential at 9 meters. So according to the numbers here, full choke is not necessary for cleanup kills or one hit kills. It feels pretty weird to say that in the Destiny community because everyone has believed otherwise for years, but as we come back up out of the rabbit hole, honestly, I think it's safe to say it, stop using full choke on your spread shotguns. All right, well, that's what we've got to say on range, and we hope it's clear. We've given you all the numbers, data, and important points to know as clearly as we can. If we learn more in the future or do more testing, we'll let you know by making new videos and adding them to the same playlist that this video is in, or talking about them in the pinned comment. Are you listening to me? I don't feel like it. Ugh, fine. All right, you put in the time. You can have your tier list now. Come here. Here's a little tier list showing some of our tests ranked against each other. We have two timeless found verdict rolls for you, a Rockin' Hill D, Fell Winners, and a Fractithist, all ranked against each other at 7 meters for one hit kill chances. We tested every one of these shotgun rolls 200 times and used our trusty binomial probability calculator to show us the range of chances that a given shotgun has to achieve a one hit kill at 7 meters. For example, a time loss found verdict with 50 range and full choke and opening shot, which brings it up to 70 range, has a chance somewhere between 52% and 66% to get a one hit kill at 7 meters. And if you were to repeat this test, because we have a 95% confidence interval, that means you would see the same results as us 95% of the time if you repeated this test. In reality, it's likely that across tens of thousands of kills, the actual probability of this found verdict getting a one hit kill at 7 meters is in the middle of 52% and 66%. Say, maybe it's like 59%. But for this time loss found verdict at the top of the table, you'll notice its interval overlaps with the other time loss found verdict on the table, which doesn't have full choke, and it overlaps quite a bit. 
Thanks again to our good friend Math Trademark. What this tells us is that the true probability of you getting a one hit kill at seven meters is probably the same or at least very close for these two shotguns because those intervals overlap noticeably. Now onto the Ragenhild with 60 range and no full choke, which is a direct comparison to the found verdict just above it in the table, which also doesn't have full choke. Well, it overlaps a bit, which means there is a chance that the Ragenhild and the found verdict have the same one hit kill chances. However, when we ran the numbers, it appears the chance of them sharing the same probability is less than 4%. So this shows us that it's highly likely that those two found verdicts have the same one hit kill chance as seven meters, while the Roggenhild has a slightly worse one hit kill chance. Now, this is where it gets interesting. There's something happening behind the scenes that is helping out found verdict a little bit more and pushing it above the Roggenhild in our table, and that's barrel length. At the time of this recording, barrel length still helps range. So that's why found verdict has an edge here. It was pretty surprising to us as well, but there's really no way around the numbers here. When you compare these two shotguns with basically identical range and the only difference is the barrel length, what it's telling us is that Time Lost Found Verdict has a better chance to one hit kill than Roggenhild. If you took away the barrel length, these two would just be identical. Also, if you compare our best found verdict roll with our Roggenhild roll, well, they don't overlap at all. So for one hit kill distance at seven meters, we are absolutely certain that a well-rolled found verdict beats out a well-rolled Roggenhild no matter what. Now, as for Felwinner's Lie, its interval overlaps with Roggenhild, which means they may share the same one hit kill probability at seven meters, but likely Felwinner's is just plain old worse. The nerf this season brought it to be somewhere between an aggressive frames chance and a precision frames chance of a one hit kill at seven meters, such as Fractithist, and you can see their interval overlaps quite a bit. So it seems Felwinner's is just barely better than a high range precision frame, and it's very clearly much, much worse than a time loss found verdict. All in all, we hope this chart shows you just how close aggressive frames are in their one hit kill chances, how the archetypes of shotguns matter much more than their perks, and above all else, we hope this gets you to finally dismantle your Felwinner's lie like I did many moons ago. Come on, just do it. Okay, finally, we're gonna recommend a few things for your shotguns to make them better and provide some summarizing thoughts about what this jungle of information means for your day-to-day -day in Destiny PvP. First up, mods for shotguns. Icarus Grip is a notoriously misunderstood mod on shotguns. What it does is reduce the inner accuracy penalty of your center pellet. With any gun in Destiny, if your feet aren't touching the ground, your accuracy cone widens and makes it so your bullet can deviate a lot more than usual. However, with shotguns, this doesn't matter much, and here's why. Based on several interviews with Chris Proctor and his follow-up direct messages via Discord he's made to Mercules 904, where he's clarified points he's already made on the Massive Breakdowns podcast, we've learned the following from Chris. Oh, also quick shout out to Merc for asking him our questions. Thank you so much. And congrats to Merc for your new job at Bungie. That's awesome. Okay, so we learned the following from Chris. When you're in the air, shotguns receive a three degree penalty to their accuracy cone. Icarus grip is a 75% reduction to in-air accuracy penalties. So 75% of three is 2.25, which means you'd have made your inner accuracy cone slightly narrower. So when you're airborne, your center pellet would be more likely to land exactly in the center of your reticle, dictating where the rest of your pellets go. This degree change may sound like a lot, but Chris himself said that because of the way the spread is built around the center pellet and the ranges that the guns operate at, even if your center pellet is inaccurate, there's still a good chance you land enough pellets to get a kill. So basically, you're still gonna be just fine accuracy-wise. This, paired with Chris's statement that he wouldn't recommend using Icarus Grip on shotguns, means that we believe it's safe to start taking Icarus Grip off of your spread shotguns and opting for other mods that provide noticeable benefits in your day-to-day -day shotgun gameplay. The other part here is that Ivan and I have been playing without Icarus Grip on our shotguns for months now, and have not noticed a loss in consistency compared to the previous years under our belts of using spread shotguns with Icarus Grip. Testing whether or not Icarus Grip matters would be a wildly inconsistent test, involving standard in-air accuracy and falling in-air accuracy, because there are actually several points of bad and good accuracy throughout your jump, and trying to reliably time that and get distances right over the course of hundreds of shots feels foolish and not worthwhile to us. We are 100% happy to take the word of Bungie's weapons feature lead on this one and go without Icarus Grip in favor of more powerful mods. Let me be clear, we're not saying Icarus Grip has no effect, it absolutely does. The point is, is just that its effect is not worth spending your mod slot on. 
Icarus Grip is improving in-air accuracy, which is already fine on spread shotguns because of how they work, so it's more worthwhile to go for a mod that improves your handling, which is much more likely to help you win fights. At the end of the day, let's just trust Chris on this one. So naturally, this brings us to Quick Access Sling, which we believe is more worthwhile than Icarus Grip. Quick Access Sling provides a 10% faster stow and ready animation speed. If you personally already have very high handling on one of your shotguns, maybe Icarus Grip is still the play for you, but that's up to you. While for most people, we think Quick Access Sling or Adept mods are the best choice. When it comes to targeting mods for your shotguns, since aim assist minimally improves center pellet reliability, we believe it's not worthwhile to go for high aim assist on shotguns. The very, very small improvement to Cohen angle of 5.25 at zero aim assist and 5.75 at 100 aim assist is simply not worth it in our book, especially considering you'll never be able to increase your shotgun's aim assist by more than like five to 15 points. For instance, the targeting adjuster mod adds five aim assist. Well, if your shotgun has 50 aim assist, then getting five more is only improving your aim assist cone by 0.025 degrees. That's pretty darn small. But of course, the exception here is controller players, in which case better aim assist also contributes to your reticle friction, which we've learned does have a noticeable and positive impact on shotgun duels if you're using a controller. Adept targeting could be a good choice here. Now, keep in mind here though, when it comes to shotgun targeting mods on your helmet, we do think it's worthwhile to use those for the 25% faster aim down sight speed, which can be super useful on shotguns with full choke. All right, sprint grip. It's fine, but not great. It does what it says, it improves the speed at which you bring your shotgun up to your hip ready for shooting or up to your eye ready for aim down sight shooting, but this is temporary and it does go away after you slide. We believe this benefit is minimal and not worthwhile compared to other mods like quick access sling, not to mention simply having high handling will improve the ready out of sprint time anyways. However, if you like it, go ahead, it's your choice. Freehand grip, from our understanding, is also not worthwhile since it's improving center pellet accuracy, which is already quite high, so you're kind of spending your mod slot on something that's already good, which is not worth it. It's kind of like the same story on Icarus grip. It's fine, it's there, and it's helping, but it's helping something that doesn't really need help. Radar tuner, underrated on all guns, including shotguns, which are weapons you ADS quite frequently. Because radar is incredibly informative in Destiny, getting it to return to you immediately upon de-scoping your weapon is really, truly excellent, since after you ADS, it does take a moment for the radar to reappear, and that can sometimes be the difference between life and death. Okay, Adept Mods. On Adept weapons, like Time Loss Found Verdict, the mods Adept Range and Adept Handling are both excellent choices, and you can make that decision for yourself on a case-by-case -case basis about where you need range and where you need handling. In most cases, we would recommend Adept Handling. On controller, Adept Targeting is great and definitely worth considering. Alright, so how do you build a true shotgun god roll? First up, opening shot will basically always be the best possible choice on any shotgun because it provides plus 20 range and plus 20 aim assist among other benefits which is incredibly potent on any shotgun for combating damage fall off. And on controller, the aim assist from opening shot makes the reticle particularly sticky. As for quick draw, it's nice, but these days we prefer consistent boosts to handling animation speeds which you can get more reliably through things like quick charge which are constantly providing plus 20 to 25 handling or animation boosters like threat detector or quick access sling or dexterity mods. Surplus is also quite nice. In general, finding ways to make your shotgun's handling speed fast at all times is remarkably powerful, as is min-maxing where you invest in faster handling between your shotgun and your primary, since swap speeds come down to both weapons, not just one or the other. So now we need to talk about barrel choices. First up, smoothbore is a terrible choice, it just widens your pellet spread and it makes cleanup kills on all shotguns absolutely abysmal, if not impossible. It can however be good for aggressive frames if you haven't yet gotten to 60 range and all you really care about with your aggressive frame is a good one hit kill, but because it nerfs cleanup kills, smoothbore is still by far the worst choice for any shotgun. Rifled barrel is a great choice because it improves range, but it hurts your handling quite a bit, so if you want to choose rifled barrel, you will need to get higher handling handling elsewhere. And then as we know, for full choke, it doesn't help one-hit kills or cleanup kills, so I cannot recommend using full choke on shotguns at this time. Also, it's important to note that when you ADS a shotgun, while it doesn't add extra range anymore according to this TWAB, we can still tell that it narrows your pellet spread ever so slightly, so honestly, the new full choke is just ADSing with any barrel. And speaking of the other barrels, barrel shroud, corkscrew, and small bore, they are all excellent choices, and it really just comes down to your situation. For example, use barrel shroud on aggressives to get that handling up, or on any frame, just use corkscrew and profit. It's great. To be honest, there is no one perfect barrel option. It's all about building your shotgun out to your personal god roll and balancing your perks with each other so you're hitting high range
range and high handling at the sweet spots. There really isn't one right way to do this. However, even though I just said there is no one right way to do this, people are still gonna wanna know what we think is the best, or maybe they just don't wanna think for themselves, and that is totally fine. I relate to that a lot. Sometimes I just want somebody to tell me what to do. So I'm just gonna run through the roles that Ivan and I think are the best for each slot and archetype. I'm just gonna put them on screen and tell you the perks, and I'm not even gonna talk about them. Hopefully by watching this video, our choices are just gonna make sense to you because you're a shotgun expert now. Also, please keep in mind that every single one of these suggestions assumes that you're using the mod Quick Charge, which is just super important for shotgunning. If you're not using it, you're kind of messing up. But if you're really not going to use Quick Charge, then you need to optimize for higher handling in these shotgun rolls. And I'm just going to assume you know how to do that at this point. So in the energy slot, if you're playing a 6v6 mode and you want to use an aggressive frame, then we think the best choice is this time loss found verdict. A small board to get it to that base 60 range we recommend for aggressives, and then full auto and assault mag to speed up the RPM and frenzy just because it's amazing in 6v6 modes, and then adept range and range masterwork. And then for a 3v3 mode in the energy slot for an aggressive, we'd recommend time loss found verdict again, but with barrel shroud to improve handling and then accurized and a range masterwork and adept range to get you up to about 75 range with opening shot and then surplus to add extra handling. And then if you're playing a 6v6 mode and you want a precision frame in the energy slot, we think the best choice is this Matador 64 with Barrel Shroud, Assault Mag, Full Auto, and Harmony. You just get a kill with your primary and then you swap to the shotgun and you have something super fast firing and high range that's doing way extra damage. We also think Swashbuckler and Golden Tricorn are excellent choices here. And then for 3v3s, the energy slot precision is also Matador 64, but with Barrel Shroud, Assault Mag, Threat Detector, Opening Shot, and Range Masterwork. That'll just be super consistent, high handling, high range, and fire pretty quickly. And then as for lightweight, in the energy slot, the 6v6 choice is the Xena Class 4 with Small Bore, Assault Mag, Slide Shot, and Swashbuckler, and a Range Masterwork. That should be pretty good for going on streaks. And then the lightweight of choice in the energy slot for a 3v3 mode would be 7 Seraph. We think the role is Rifled and Accurized with Quick Trot and Snapshot plus a Range Masterwork. Vorpal Weapon would also be a good choice here, but all in all, this should be plenty rangy and still have really high handling, especially if you're using Quick Charge. Alright then, in the Kinetic slot, if you want an aggressive frame and you're playing a 6v6 mode, we think the choice is the Zoragon Heal D with Small War, Accurized, Perpetual Motion, and Enhanced 1-2 Punch. Really any of the enhanced traits are going to be really good. I particularly think Enhanced Elemental Capacitor is good, so just go ahead and craft that one, and then on an Arc subclass it'll be amazing. But in a 6v6 mode where you're going to be dealing with a lot of supers, Enhanced 1-2 Punch is really nice because you only have to hit 10 pellets and then you activate one two punch and you can one bang a super so just hit 10 pellets melee the super and it should die or just get right up in someone's face land 10 pellets to kill them and then turn around and use your ranged melee on somebody else and you'll probably one hit kill them or just do a ton of damage and then in 3v3 modes, the kinetic aggressive of choice is this Adept Astral Horizon with Barrel Shroud, Accurized, Surplus, Opening Shot, Range Masterwork, and Adept Range. You should have 70 range that way and quite high handling, so that should be really nice. If only you could still get this thing though. Then for Precisions, the kinetic 6v6 choice would be this Barrel Shroud, Assault Mag, Full Auto, and Adagio roll. Adagio is really nice because you just get one kill and then you get really high damage. And then for 3v3 modes, the kinetic precision of choice is this Fractithis with Barrel Shroud, Assault Mag, Quick Draw, and Opening Shot, and a Range Masterwork. You'll have very high range this way and nice handling as well. And then for kinetic lightweights, the 6v6 choice in our book is this Wastelander with Small Bore, Assault Mag, Slide Shot, and Adagio with a Range Masterwork. Adagio really does seem like the choice because with this roll, your RPM will be the same as a Precision Frame with Assault Mag, but you get 10 more range and 30% more damage. So that's better than aggressive frames, but you'd have the tight spread of a lightweight, which is amazing. Other good perks there would be Harmony, Trench Barrel, and Swashbuckler. And then finally for 3v3 modes, if you want to use a lightweight kinetic, we think the choice is this Reese Walker with Rifled, Accurized, Surplus, Iron Reach, and a Range Masterwork. You'll just have 100 range at all times. Your second shot will be a little less consistent because of low stability, but it's still just going to be an awesome lightweight. And then if you're on controller for the 3v3 kinetic lightweights, we'd actually recommend going Wastelander instead with Rifled, Accurized, Perpetual Motion, Opening Shot, and a Range Masterwork, reason being that the higher aim assist will really help out your reticle friction on controller. And personally, if I'm being honest, I am on mouse and keyboard, but I'd probably still choose the Wastelander only because of that tighter reticle, which I think is just super helpful. All right, well, those are the god rolls in our books, but honestly, do whatever you want with shotguns these days. The rolls barely matter, and it's so much more about the archetype. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments, but hopefully most of this just makes sense. Ah! Are we there yet? Yes! Oh, 
Alrighty, before we go, there are a few final conclusions and interesting facts. First up, you have to aim down sights fully to get full chokes tighter spread. Some people think you don't, but you do. Also, once you start ADSing, full choke immediately activates the part of the perk that removes the possibility of you doing crit damage. However, you don't get the benefit of the tighter spread until you finish the ADS animation. So unless you fully ADS with full choke, you're actually just shooting yourself in the foot because you haven't tightened your spread and you've just removed all your crit damage. Next up, barrel length does matter for improving shotgun range to this day. You can see this in testing. Shotguns with longer barrels do help your range. The fact Bungie chopped off part of Chaperone's ornament Panama Ravine is a tacit confirmation from Bungie that this is how it works for now. Next up, we recommend getting around 70 range for aggressives and not really going any higher. You could attain this by getting around 50 range and having opening shot, which takes you up to about 70. This will allow you to get reliable one-hit kills at 6.8 meters and more reliably get kills against high resilience guardians too. Not to mention more reliable reliable cleanup kills. If you don't have opening shot, we highly recommend getting 60 range at a minimum. And finally, for all shotguns, if you cannot push your damage falloff point up to about 6.5 to 7 meters depending on the archetype, we think all spread shotguns feel bad. Ooh, also we have to mention duality. It has the same spread as precision frame shotguns from the hip, but it has much higher damage falloff, which makes it better than the average precision frame for getting cleanup kills. Furthermore, ADSing turns your spread into a 150 damage slug to the body, which is also a highly potent way to get cleanup kills. All right, finally, it's important to state that this information can change sometimes. Bungie is constantly balancing things and changing code behind the scenes, and we're constantly learning new things from developers when they make public statements. So as these findings inevitably evolve and grow stronger and clearer, we will make a follow-up video if necessary or just add any updates to the pinned comment. So please make sure to check the pinned comment or our Twitter pages for any changes that may come to light in the months and years that follow this video. We're adding this video and others like it to a playlist all about weapons, science, and destiny where we'll update you with shotgun news and other things as time goes on. So be sure to like or follow this YouTube playlist or whatever it is you do with YouTube playlists. And speaking of which, if you got something out of this video, please repay us by subscribing to me and Ivan or share this video with friends since it literally took months and hundreds of hours to create. We hope you learned something today. We hope we put a few shotgun myths to rest and we hope this helps the community. All right, thank you so much for your time and have a good day. Cheers. Um, oh, we can win. Just wait, wait. Oh come my back, come God. Back. Oh, never mind. What did you just do?